Alright guys, I gonna jinx it by saying this, but I think I've stabilized it for now. I do apologize hugely for the big issue there. My internet uh, seems to have crapped the bed for a lesser explanation there and caused the entire stream to destabilize on itself. I've had to adjust the settings, so I do apologize as well that the quality is definitely not going to be to most people's likings. I've had to probably lower it to a very large degree to make it palatable. We probably will still drop frames uh, at some point here, as we can already see, but we're just going to try our best to get through this game, hopefully. And well, we'll see where things go from there. There's not a whole lot I can do about it at the time until I can get a replacement streamer. But again, that's my fault, and I do apologize for that. Please blame Comcast for all of our problems. So, this round being brought down to a 3 versus 1 now as we actually get back into the game. Fox looking to clutch this one out. G2 down 7 to 3 at this point. Let's see, Kerrigan just trying to close it against Fox. They are going to succeed in doing so. And then again, we'll hand over another one to TSM as we try to figure out what exactly has been going on. And again, folks, if you are having problems with the stability of the stream for whatever reason or the quality is not to your liking, uh, there is also the Russian stream available over at, I think it's twitch.tv slash starletter5. If you'd like to tune into that one, if you'd like a better quality stream, you can just go ahead and watch over there. I'm going to try to turn it up again after this game, but for the time being, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. So now we go into another gun round, of course, with Kerrigan. Very aggressive peek as he works his way outside over here of, connect of Connector once again. He's going to be able to find Makalele and shut him out of the picture. More of the players coming in through underpass. They're going to try to find a response, and Kerrigan playing this very up close, but Jacob finds him first. Brings him down to 11 HP, but he's legged as well. Brought down to 17, and that nade might just kill him. It looks like he's actually able to evacuate just in time. Gets himself outside of there. He's able to keep himself safe for the time being. But Dupree again, sitting inside, trying to keep himself away from the flames here as he holds his position inside the ladder, but they don't expect him to be there. Fox picks up one kill, but again, the trades are still coming in very nicely from the guys on TSM. Brought down to a 2 versus 2 is AZ. Finds another one from the side of G2, but unfortunately, there's Dupree. All this time being kept himself very, very quiet inside of that room over there. Finds himself another one, and now brings it down on just AZ, looking at Clutch. He knows Kerrigan sitting behind it, and Kerrigan misses that very up-close shot. Looking for the last one as well to try to clutch this one out. Is he going to be able to accomplish it is the question now. As Dupree is down at 16 HP, he is giving AZ the room to actually go in and pick up the bombs. So this could prove to be a pretty big mistake, but also this is going to give him a slightly closer angle against AZ as well. As he presses forward, now looking to get that planet, he's going to succeed in doing so. But again, now Dupree inching closer and closer. AZ's going to go for the peak, but he shuts it down anyway. And that will be another round going by the way of G2 here. Bringing things up to 4-8 to eight now. So very much so in the favor of TSM on the CT side. But G2 definitely making a good effort to try and get themselves back into this game here. But even with a lot of these, uh, even with a lot of these losses, or even with finally, I should say, a loss coming out here, there's still a decent amount of cash left over here for the side of TSM, but take a look at Dupree as he rolls out. Only gonna be able to find two out of those three kills, but still lining them up there. G2 in a bit of an unfortunate situation. However, at the end of the day, things actually don't seem to matter all of that much as they actually evenly traded out very, very nicely. Bringing it down to a 3 versus 3. And AZ walking in there, picking up an additional frag. Cajun B will be able to pick up the response to that one as he ends up dropping AZ once again. Now bringing this into a 2 versus 2. We see both Zipnix and Cajun B definitely looking out for more of a B push right now with Zipnix paying much closer attention to the B site and Cajun B relying on the sites. He's going to roll right into A. Might find himself a bit of a surprise, but as he catches in, thankfully Jacob's there in order to watch out for that exact push. He's going to catch him. And now this is brought down to a 2 versus 1. Zipnix looking at clutch. Steel was sending himself back over here behind the A site. More closer to CTs. It works his way outside of market. So this situation is going to be very hard for him to clutch out. And unfortunately, again, just walks right into the crosshairs of Jacob. He's going to shut him down. And that will be another one that goes by the way of G2. Now I'm finally getting some consistency here on the T side. And as we look at TSM, they're going to have to go for a force buy here to try and empty out their bank. They'll be starting from square one once again if they end up dropping this one. But keep in mind, still, they're already on the two-round losing bonus here with this one. They actually should only have to do the one save. We won't be seeing a double save of them starting off right from the beginning. Thankfully, they had stacked up a very good amount of money with however many rounds in a row. This is, I think it's like six or seven there that they went in a row for themselves. G2 have been trying to put up a good fight themselves. However, this round, at least Kerrigan is going to be able to open things up from the side of TSM. Cajun B picking up that Mag 7. 
You already saw, I don't think it was him, but somebody picked up an ace with it in the last round, and Fox tries to get aggressive, but is trapped inside of the ladder room there. It's pretty with helpful, and it's coming out from a teammate who's going to be able to shut him out of the play. And now Device going for this big flank too, shuts out an additional player, takes down AZ. Kerrigan in an up-close battle here, but they don't realize just how close he is. Walks up there, gets the shotgun frag on a Makalele. Jacob quick on the response, but speaking of shotguns, in comes Cajun B, able to drop Jacob and TSM now right back into the mix here, just before their money was about to be destabilized. They pick up an additional round. They're now going to be able to bring themselves up to nine points, maybe a tenth or two, as unfortunately for G2, they're going to have to go for a very, very big save here with the Tech 9s, Deagles, PT-50s, armor behind a lot of this, but again, utility is going to become a very big problem, considering, that, again, they've only got three players with a decent amount of it, and you have to worry about the pistols too, whereas TSM are armed to the teeth, buying out everything here. And they've got everything they could possibly want in this mix here. Using a lot of it fairly early on, as we can see, though, those nades going away, but still a very decent amount of it here. As the race smoke comes back in through T-Ramp, that Molly is going to push a couple of the players that were sitting here back a little further. And overall, G2 might just have to force their way through this right into the face of Cajun B. As he sits just outside, doesn't realize they're coming as of yet, but now they roll out. But no, he doesn't pick up anybody. And Jacob gets the Deagle headshot. AZ fighting a second kill. Now Jacob picking up that rifle, but thankfully Device, Debris, and Device again are here to shut it out. However, now we do see AZ getting a nice another shot here is able to take down device and it's just gonna be Zipnix now looking to clutch this one versus two they haven't found him as of yet but right now nobody checking out what's actually going on back over here behind ticket box so he is gonna leave himself a little bit overexposed, hoping he can catch Makalele trying to investigate this, but AZ's actually going to be the one to peek out first, and now Makalele goes for it, but a great shot from Zipix just lines it up against Makalele. Now AZ, though, doesn't realize he has the op, and he's going to pick up the final kill. G2, bring it back once again, pick up a six point for themselves, and now end it at a 9-6 to six scoreline here at the end of the first half. So TSM looking very good, but not necessarily in a safe position here with G2 being allowed to pick up six Rounds on that T side, that's a very good foundation which can be built built upon, kind of part of the course, but still a pretty high amount of rounds to be picked up on that T side. However, comparing it to what we saw in the last map though, where they actually, were they actually I'm trying to remember if they held the lead or not, where they were very close to only the lead back at an 8-7, definitely could have been a little bit better there. But at the same time too, this time, TSM got themselves off to a very, very good start in comparison to our last map, where G2 just had this huge lead and then dropped it by the, uh, by the, by the end of the first half. This time it was TSM that starts it off strong, and then G2 bounces it back a little more. Not to the biggest degree, but they do bounce it back a little bit. And here in this pistol round in the second half, TSM just going to try to go for a quick take over here onto the A site. So far, AZ, the only one that's picking up kills. He's going to find three. One of them coming in through the smoke, and now Fox finding another one. And Makalele comes in there, saves AZ's life, takes out Kerrigan as he tries to chase down that frag at the very least, but they're not going to find it. And a shutdown comes out from G2. Now they're going to be in a great position to immediately try and tie things up at nine points, pending on the buy we see from TSM. Might just end up being forced here, as they don't get the plant. We do see the upgraded pistols coming in, but no armor or anything behind it. So if they can get a plant here, I think they still have the potential to go for a third round force buy. And that may be the game plan here, is they're actually trying to play this a little bit dynamically too. Unfortunately, the early aggression does not go very far at all, as Materius is going to be able to shut down Device. Jacob getting that grenade stopper kill in order to take out Cajun B as well as he eliminates him. AZ, nice shot there in order to take out Zipnix from inside of the palace. And this is just a shutdown from G2 so far. Dupree is going to be the last one left alive here. Sitting at 62 HP. Trying to crawl back and again, just looking to get as much damage as possible. But this so far has been the round that is actually going to end up being flawless from G2. They don't lose a single player. I think only a combined total of maybe like 50-something damage has been done that entire round there from the side of TSM. So not what they were looking for, but at the same time, didn't go for too big of an investment beyond those deagles. So it's not going to be the worst story in the world. They can repeat this buy once again, and that's exactly to some degree what they are going to do. Maybe a little bit lighter this time as we only see the one deagle coming in in the hands of Dupree. And this time as well, this is just going to be a straightforward push, but look at this. G2, they know it's coming. They're just going to push directly into these players, and it's 4 to nothing here. Looking for that final kill now. It's going to have to come from Zipnix, who's sitting back around the corner a little bit, just outside of the T-Ramp. G2s can easily push into this and find them, but they're just going to be a little bit careful, because there is still those headshots which can throw these guys off just a little bit if they're not expecting it. As Zipnix rolls out, looking for the pop onto these players, not going to be able to find it. And Materius again comes out on top there, shuts it out, and now we'll be tied up at 9 points as we transition into the first gun round here for TSM.
So when we look at the investment here from TSM, no choice to go for an op. They might have been able to afford it. Didn't exactly look at the starting amounts there, but there could have been a chance to squeak through it there if they wanted to try and get some pressure on middle. For the most part here, and we've even seen it from these eco rounds, they've tried to avoid middle to a pretty big degree here, earlier on at least, but it's going to be Cajun B that picks up the first kill. Catches AZ as he tries to work his way inside it. Oh, a sexy flick comes out from Fox there as he's able to take down Kerrigan, eliminating him. Now off to a good start here, trying to trade things back and forth. Neither team really having a huge advantage as of yet, but another trade occurs. But here comes Jacob. He has the P90. He's going to be able to drop Zipnix. The Vice did pick up an additional kill, but now they're pushing back in through Connector, and that's going to be the shutdown clause that comes out there from G2. TSM try a very blunt push, just try to go directly into that A site. It starts off okay as they find even trades here and there, but unfortunately, once that rotation rolls in from G2, they're cut off from Connector, not expecting that play at all. Bit of a missed call on the communication and not enough presence happening back over there towards middle. So, due to that, they just, again, they're, they're left with no information in terms of what's happening. They have no idea that rotation is coming, and they just end up getting shut down and now being forced onto another eco round here. Three deagles coming into play this time around over here from Device, Dupree, and Cajun B, but no armor sitting behind any of it, with the exception of Dupree, and the drop spot comes in from Fox. One and two. Looking for the third as well, but not going to find it just as of yet. In this round, again, the impact has already been all but nullified here. Materius is going to have to hold off the A-site for a little bit longer, but Fox, he thinks there's a third player sitting back underneath, and he's correct about that. Fix it up, and the reliance on his teammates was well-placed, as, again, both AZ and Materius are able to handle things very well onto that A-site, and they will indeed close things out. So far, a flawless second half for the members of Gamers 2. Because they're going to be up now at 5 to nothing against TSM, who really, and this is definitely explaining, uh, well actually no, this is a pause from G2, interestingly enough. I thought this would have been the pause from TSM. Ah, uh, Fox is having some ping issues, so hopefully we can get that resolved very, very quickly. And then we can get this game started once again here. But so far, G2 with a pretty barnstorm performance. Obviously, this is not the worst thing in the world for TSM because TSM can use this to some degree anyway here to try and think about what exactly might have been going wrong. We've really only seen, of course, a couple of gun rounds being brought into the picture as of yet. But from what we have seen, TSM, again, there's not a whole lot of dynamicism going on in terms of their takes and the strategies that they're using. Very direct, and G2 are able to figure this one out very quickly and shut these players down. This combined with just these super aggressive plays like Fox dropping down over there through underpass and shutting out players. Again, TSM is not left with a whole lot left here. And for G2, they're, they're left pretty strong. And the money situation, too, looking at AZ, Jacob, and Fox. These guys are left with a crap ton of cash. But this time, once again, it's going to be Cajun B that starts it off from TSM. As he picks up the first kill back over here, takes out AZ as he gets a little bit too aggressive that time. He's going to start it off well. Zipnix, he's going to get forced back outside of the palace. As it does look like TSM are starting to rotate themselves a little bit further towards the A site. But Zipnix will have to regroup in a moment here, potentially with some of his teammates. As there is, again, no middle presence really being escalated here by the members of TSM. The only exception to this is going to be Dupree, but he's only going to be looking for a late entry. Now, this could be good, as again, he has the potential to catch the rotator, which is going to be Jacob. And, oof, Kerrigan there too, just barely missing that shot on the Fox that would have killed him. Right, he's it on a 5 HP, so it still connects, but Fox is going to be able to get the revenge over there on a Cajun B, burns him alive, takes him down, and now Dupree getting a little bit too aggressive too early here, as you still do have number 7, which is Jacob, sitting back over there inside of the apartments. Kerrigan finding another kill, but good patience for Makaleli as he's able to find out Device here too. Very, very slow play as you can see, but TSM can't really afford to do this anymore. They have to go for it. Now, Dupree has gotten himself into a good position, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem like anybody from G2 is really going to run into that for the time being. Now, Mutiris jumps back up. He's going to catch an additional guy, takes out Zipnix. And we do see that coming in now. Jacob not going to go inside through the crawl space, so all that positioning for nothing. And Materius even hears it too, so he's going to be able to come out and contest it. A little messy on the spray, but he still picks up the frag, and Makaleli finding another one as well. Again, really great retake coming out there from G2, handling that very well. TSM try again to set up this amazing... He's trying to set up this, like, super amazing crossfire that's going to stop any rotation from rolling in. And if the if the stars did align, if TSM or if uh, G2's members did rotate in the correct spots, that could have been a very large possibility. But it basically goes everywhere they didn't want them to. And that just makes that very, very flawed. As, again, a lot of members from TSM are left out in the open. They can't really support each other because of the positions uh, that they had to worry about. And they end up getting shut down very easily because of that. So now it's 9-12. to 12. G2 is still having a very strong lead. And the money easily 
in a very good spot here now. You very rarely see the CTs in a position where they're just going to be at the edge of being able to buy through a losing bonus there. They're going to be able to buy for this round, of course. Fox is going to bring his money down a little bit by rebuying up with the op and everything. AZ is going to be the same story for him, but when we look at 13k on Jacob and 10k on Makalele, we're going to see at least two, maybe three, depending on how they scrub the cash. We're going to see at least two, maybe three rebuys coming out from these guys, and from that point forward, they're almost going to be at that full losing bonus already, so at most, you'll see one save round, and that may just end up being a 5-7 with armor round too, which again, you can still have some very good impact on the CT side with that. Whereas for TSM, they are going to get another buy round here, but they're just struggling to pick up the basics in most cases. And actually, with that previous round there too, round number 21, that was actually the first time in that entire half that we actually saw the bomb getting planted. This has been another problem for TSM, is they haven't actually been able to get that bomb down, so the money's been left fairly low. That full losing bonus is only going to really stack you up to consistent buys if you're able to always get that bomb plant down. And so far, these rounds have not even been that close. That was the first time they could get it. So we are going to see another big buy coming out from TSM this time, but if they cannot at least bring themselves up to the same portion that they were in the previous round where they were able to get the bomb down, then they're still going to be left with basically zero cash uh, and going into the next one. It'll be a, it'll still probably be a buy, but it'll be one that's going to be very weak with like random tech nine coming into play or something like that, or they'll still probably have the full, they'll, may, maybe that will be the case if they choose to have one player maybe going for the utility buy. Um, but if they all go for rifles, then they're not going to have any utility left in their arsenal, and obviously that leaves them in their own sort of weakness there too as that became a little bit of a problem uh, back over on the first map on Inferno. And they're starting to fall behind by a pretty big margin, too. So not, do they just, not only do they just need to stabilize their economy, but they need to actually start winning out some rounds here because if this goes any further in the favor of G2, especially in, their, especially in terms of them just picking up more and more money at the end of these rounds with them happening so cleanly most of the time, uh, then it might just be unstoppable. And G2 could be looking at a 2-0 victory here. So there's going to be a good opening shot, though, from Device as Fox gets himself a little bit over-aggressive, pushes out and is taken down there. That's a great shot from him to open things up now from the side of TSM. And we can see AZ too, trying to pull things up close and personal here inside of the connector as the T's have smoked it off, but Dupree is waiting for an exact push to happen with the positioning of this smoke. He's going to fire through, it gets a couple hints of damage there onto AZ, but not really going to be anything significant just as of yet, as the rest of TSM now actually trying to line up for a takeover there onto the B site. Finally now, changing up the game plan a little bit, as they have picked up the first opening pick here by the apartments, which they previously have really struggled to do. But as we can see here, Makalele finding the first frag here, takes out Device. They haven't actually spawned as of yet here. Jacob, who's going to be sitting inside, he finds the first kill. Can't find anything else, but he does get the intel on the Zipnix, who is now going to be the last player alive. And beyond the progress that they were making from apartments, unfortunately, in that round, TSM failed on almost every other avenue. So they don't get into it. And again, now we look at the money. We go back to what we were talking about when we were on that pause. Still on full losing bonus, but without a plant, we have this awkward buy situation where Kerrigan has to go for a Tech 9 buy, so his team can have another player with a full utility stack. Device has his because he had some good frags that round, so he gets the extra cash in that regard, uh, but Dupree has to downgrade to a Galil, KGB barely has any, it's the same story for Zipnix as well, as he's only got a flash now, I think he did have another smoke, but he's already used it, it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna make for a very good take, unfortunately, and still no mid-presence too, which is such a crucial part of this map, that for the most part, TSM have just been, been ignoring here, so as the take begins, look, G2 know this is coming, so they're just trying to shut it down. All this damage being done, and Zipnik's actually surprising a little bit here as he walks his way in. But AZ and Fox picking up two kills, and actually just through brute forcing it, TSM have managed to find their way into this site here. Definitely a very messy encounter, but it works out great. And now it's down to Jacob and Makalele to try and close things out in this one to keep the record flawless in this half. But Zipnik sitting behind Firebox over there, not going to be spotted. Jacob is brought down, and there is a good nade that comes in too. Zipnix, he's got to run, man. He's going to burn alive, and there we go. Brings him down so low. They're going to pull off this retake once again. Device is trying to hold in his position, but coming up from the top, he doesn't notice him. He doesn't notice him. He doesn't notice him. Device is going to pick up the first one, and what? Jacob doesn't even try to react, and he just tries to stick the plant. Device just shuts it down, and now he gets a free up for that. So TSM, they finally pick up their first round here, and what was that? There was no communication to say he's sitting below Tetris, or for some reason, Device just did What? What the hell just happened there? Doesn't even try to react to it at all, he just sticks the plant. Alright, so we go into another one. Obviously, G2 have the money, but Fox is going to get dropped very early on in this round. AZ, he's taking some damage as well. Sitting down now very, very low at 15 HP. They're going to push in. Mutiris holding very well, sitting back over here too. Kerrigan picking him off, but... As we see now, again, the damage has been done. It's actually fairly even for the time being, but TSM do have a little bit of a health pool advantage, and definitely, in terms of the impact they've made so far in this round, they're definitely leading it, but AZ, 
He's gonna open up the flank angle here, and this is risky with only 15 HP because he walks into anybody that's watching out for this flank. He'll probably be a dead man in a long-range battle, so he actually does end up moving himself away from this now. He's gonna regroup with the rest of his teammates here, sitting inside of Connector. And we can see, too, some progress trying to be made here by Device as he tries to find his way out, but AZ is gonna deck him down to the ground. Jacob finding another one. They're gonna looking to clutch this out, but it's not gonna be possible there. Jacob finds the final frag. And that will be G2 once again, restoring the balance as far as this map is concerned and bringing it up to 10 to 14. So now the pause comes in again. <laughs> this is the third pause now from G2. Because I think, unfortunately, oh, this time it's a mouse issue. <laughs> it's all sorts of issues for G2 today. We think we've had two players with lag issues, and now we've had somebody with a mouse broken. So G2. Just, just really making sure that their, uh, their stuff is solid here, but they're good to go now, so there'll be a very short pause. And this is actually going to be one of, this is, this is actually really dangerous now, to be completely honest, for TSM, because they win that one round, um, and then they're going to be destabilized right after this. So, the big problem, actually, this, the, like, the game might be over, I, like, I haven't even actually paid attention to this, this is my fault for a little bit of an oversight here, but, uh, take a look at the money now here from TSM and what they're going to get. They have to win this round, just with the Tech-9 buy, because if they don't do it, then G2, obviously, again, even if they do win it, G2 are going to be able to go for another buy, but that'll put up the 15 points, and I really don't think TSM is going to have that solid of a buy still. We're, we're going to look at rifles, more than likely, but it's not really going to be that strong, and again, it's just so aggressive coming out here from G2. Three kills to none, a fourth coming in in just a second here, as we're going to see Jacob taking out Zipnix, and this aggressive push, there you go, shutting him out, Jacob finding three kills there, and obviously... You see Makalele supporting him in a pretty good result there as well. And now that sets it up. TSM have to force buy again, but all they have are Tech-9 and Deagle buys. <laughs> pretty much everybody going to go for the Deagle. It's a full house here. Three Deagles, two Tech-9s, basically zero utility. And I think that last gun round there was what decided it there in the favor of G2. As now TSM, they don't have anything to buy against this. And we just saw from that last round how well G2 were able to handle situations like this. This should be it. It's going to be a 2-0 from G2, unless we see an absolute miracle here coming out from TSM. And as we see there, Makalele just pushing aggressively, finding the first one. They don't exactly expect Kerrigan to be sitting through that smoke, but AZ's gonna find him anyway. Fox picking up another one on a Zipnix, and then Device in Cage and B. Now the last two alive here. Device looking for something against these players, but as the smoke fades away, Cage and B does get one very nice Deagle shot to take down Fox, but that's not gonna be enough. He needs four more of those to save his team, and this one gets a second, but is decked to the floor by AZ. And that is indeed, guys, going to close. What the hell? That is indeed, guys, going to close things out there. 16 to 10 is going to be the final map number two score in the favor of Gamers 2. They will also take the set two to nothing. And that indeed will close out our match for today. We didn't see a whole lot of that first half, unfortunately, due to the lag issues. And I do apologize for that. But we saw in the second half there, too, TSM, unfortunately, just playing...